Okay, we're looking at homework problems from page 601 through 606 in our textbook. And our first, uh, Josh has done this very well, and he showed complete ionization. He did not stop here. What we're looking at is the acid H3ASO4, and so we're going to call this guy an acid, and you didn't have to do this part of it, but I just want to kind of review this again and, and set this Bronsted-Lowry thing. Why is water going to be considered a base? Anyone? Why is it considered a base? What does a base do? Hmm? What is a base? Bronsted-Lowry definition of a base. What is it? Anyone? Go, money. It's going to accept a proton. So, what happened here? Proton went from here over to here. And that guy was a base, and now he's what over here? Good, conjugate acid. I call it C acid. And what is this, what is this stuff? going to become base. good so over here he's called a conjugate base okay and if we're tying them up this is how they get tied up right okay so the base becomes the conjugate acid the acid becomes the conjugate base all right why do we call these guys conjugates and the guys on the right the products why do we call those conjugates? Because they're products. Okay? If we wrote this equation, you see that arrows go both ways on this equation. Because they go both ways, I could write my products on the left-hand side and my reactants on the right-hand side, and what would that make the conjugate acid would become? He's the acid. Remember, conjugates doesn't change the fact that they're a base or an acid. It just says conjugate, they're on the right side. Okay? But if I took the right side and put it on the left side, that conjugate acid would become an acid, and the conjugate base would become a base. Okay? Now, this is what 90% eh, of the students today that I check papers on, 90% of the students stop right here. This is what we're going to do next. H2, ASO4. And just like we said before, this guy is a 1 minus. But he's not a conjugate acid anymore. What is he? He's an acid. Okay. And we're going to take him, and he's going to have to drop off another one of his hydrogens. And so. We're still going to get the hydronium atom, or ion, hydronium ion as a 1 plus, and we're also going to get who? Not H3. That's, that's going to take us back here. Remember, we're dropping an acid ion. H2. Ah, H, S, O, A, S, O, 4. Not S. Oh, I want that to be sulfate. A, S, O, 4. And now what's the charge on A, S, O, 4? Two minus. Two minus. Now, you know how you get everything right? Watch this. Charge on the left side in the first equation. Charge on the left side. Does the H3ASO4, does it have a charge? Does the H2O have a charge? All right. On the right side, what's the charge on the hydronium ion? One. One plus. What's the charge on the H2ASO4? One. Net charge? Yeah. Ah. Did that say anything to you? What did we just discover? Neutral. They're neutral on both sides. Both sides are neutral. Now let's go to the second one. Okay, this is showing this, the second line here. This line shows the second ionization. 
Now in the second ionization, what's the charge on the left side with the H2 ASO4? One minus. One minus. What's the charge? Oh, now that's all we have on the left side, right? So the net charge is? One minus. One minus. Now, I got H3O, the, the uh, hydronium ion, and the hydronium ion is a 1 plus, and the HASO4 is? Two minus. Two minus. Net charge on the right? One minus. One minus. One minus. One minus. That's just a little double check to make sure that you've got everything correct. Okay. Do I need any more? It said a complete ionization. How many hydrogens? Hydrogens at the top equation. Three. How many here? Oh, I haven't gotten rid of all of them, have I? Oh, yep. So now I've got to start with this guy, right? This guy right here. And we're going to go down to the next line. And we start out with this same guy, right? H A S O. There you go. A S O 4. And what's his charge? Two minus. Two minus. What is he? Acid or base? Oh, thank you. What is he? Acid or base? Acid. Okay. And the water again is going to be what? Base. Good. Now we go over here. We got the hydronium ion. Oops, stage three. And that's a one plus. And then we got the what's left of this after we get rid of a hydrogen? ASO4, and what's his charge? Three minus. Okay, so we got a three minus tube there. Net charge on the right? Two minus. Two minus, good. What's the net charge on the left? Two minus. Okay, that works, huh? Yeah, all right. Now, we're going to... All right, now we're going to uh, go over to page 605 in the textbook, and we're going to do... Oh, they've got the H3SO4. Okay, HNO2. And what's this? We've got it right here. Okay, this is HNO2. And water. Going back and forth with H3O plus, the hydronium ion. And we're also going to have the NO2. One minus. Okay, first ionization. This is called the K sub A. The K sub A is just another equilibrium constant. And it's the equilibrium for the ionization of an acid. How about this guy? Are we going to include him? Why don't we include that H2O? What? Liquid. Good. What else do we leave out of equilibrium constants? Solids. Good. Okay. And so this guy's aqueous. This guy's aqueous. So he'll be in. And this guy's aqueous. By the way, what's a surefire way to tell that you got an aqueous? You know, for absolute certain it's aqueous? Charge. Has a charge. Can't have a charge without being aqueous. Okay. It has to be dissolved in water to be able to be aqueous. So that that being dissolved in water, we got it made there. So let's go to here and let's see what we have. What's on top? Products or reactants? Yeah. Products. Products on top. So we got our H3O. Hope this looks familiar. Yeah, this is case of equilibrium. You bet it is. And HNO3 or NO2. HNO2 on the bottom. And there you go. Crystal Whisbane. Done. Uh -huh.